Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the 10 things I wish I would have known before I started playing the oboe. Now before we get into that, I want to share with you a little bit of what I want this channel to look like. I love music and I want to share that with you guys. So I'm going to be doing a lot of classical works as well as pop covers and anything else music related in between. Uh, if you guys have thoughts or suggestions, feel free to comment that below. If not, we'll dive right into this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like. Alright, so one of the first things I learned very quickly when I picked up the oboe was that it was very expensive. Now I'm not just talking about like a little bit here and there, no. This case and the reasons out of it are over $100. And we need reeds to play the instrument every day. So they die really fast and it's a quick investment to buy a new one. So it's just something you have to consider when you're, you're pursuing this instrument. Then when we start talking about other things you need, like materials, music, oboe, cleaning supplies, it all racks up. And this isn't a cheap instrument to get into. So if you're new to the oboe or thinking about starting it, just know it's going to be a long haul. So now that we talked about reeds, I'm going to share with you a little bit that I've learned about how they function and what they do for the instrument. So not only are they expensive, but you have to put them in water for them to even vibrate. Um, these reeds just need a lot of moisture in order to loosen up the fibers within the cane. And it's not a huge issue, but it's just annoying when you ever want to play an instrument, you have to wait until the reed is ready to play. So my next point is that it takes a lot of pressure to play the oboe. So the reed has a small opening about like this big and there's just like so much air you have to fill it with. So in order to make it vibrate, even after you soak it in water, you need to use a lot of air and a lot of support. And if you check out my last video with my girlfriend playing the oboe, you can start to see her struggling with that. I'll put a link right below so you can check that out. After that, it's also just very difficult to play the oboe. So my next point is that the oboe is very difficult to play. Not only is it strenuous on the mouth and the muscles and the airflow, you have to really pay attention to your fingers and the music. There's a lot that goes into it and you already can't even focus because you're like blowing out air and you're like, ah, it's so much pressure. So I would say the oboe is one of the hardest instruments to play. The next point is that the oboe is very temperamental. This means that if it gets too hot or too cold, it's very dangerous and harmful for the oboe. Um, not only can it crack, but the rods can shift. And if your oboe is made out of wood, like most professional oboes are, it's horrible. It's not a safe thing for it. Um, it's also very finicky. It it's, has a lot of fine tuning that you need to watch out for. The poles and the screws get loose every once in a while and you just have to have regular maintenance so that you can make sure your oboe is in top shape. So the oboe is also very unique in the sense of how you breathe. You're not just inhaling, but you're also exhaling. So instead of breathing for air, sometimes you have to release that air because the opening of the reed is so small, you can't push the air through all of it because all that air just stays stored up here, which is also one of the reasons it's a, it takes a lot of pressure. It's because it, all that pressure is involved in your face and mouth. So it takes a lot of practice and like a trained discipline to just do it automatically because sometimes I inhale and then the next measure I need to exhale so that I'm not going to pass out. So if you've been drawn to the oboe, you probably know that the oboe is solo demanding. Now, what does that mean? It means we get a lot of solos in the orchestra. There's a lot of individual parts specifically made for the oboe to shine. We usually get the more somber tunes or the joyful, happy, jolly tunes that like pick up the pace of things to keep it lighthearted. The oboe can play very lyrical and happy at different times. And so that's why a lot of composers choose to make the oboe a highlighted feature in any particular piece. A lot of times there's a lot of practicing that gets involved. You have to be ready to play on cue. There's no 
shine away or, or being in a crowd of a hundred other players because you are featured. So that's one thing I wish I would have known before I picked the instrument. All right, moving on to point number eight. So the oboe has a half hole key. Normally you cover the key with your whole finger. For the half hole key, you have to cover it halfway, <laughs> thus half hole. So if you can see here, we have this key and this is our half hole key. Now you're not always gonna cover this. Sometimes you need to push it halfway down to create more notes on the instrument. It's just a, a hard thing in that learning curve that you eventually do automatically. But again, I still struggle with that. And it's a long journey for anyone to really get fluid at that. My next point is that it takes years for you to get a good tone on the oboe. Usually a good tone is developed over years. You spend a lot of time practicing and making sure you get the right sound that you're looking for. As a beginner oboist, you don't get that luxury because you're just trying to learn how to play this thing. And that's why your tone sounds really bad in the beginning. No one really recommends it for beginners because there's just a lot of work that goes into it. And after watching this video, you kind of know why. But if you practice it and hone in on those skills, you eventually create this beautiful sounding instrument that people just love and is angelic and beautiful. So I'd say just you got to keep practicing it and eventually you will get that desired tone. Now my last point is that you get to make your own reeds. Now how do you make a reed? Basically you get cane and you tie it to a blank and then you scrape it until you get the vibrations that you like. Now when I say you get to make your own reeds, what I'm really saying is that we as oboists need to make our own reeds so that we can create the sounds that we like on the oboe. We have to adjust the reed to the oboe so that it would like it and it just fits with the oboe. All right, so now you're probably thinking, I would never do the oboe because it's just way too difficult and there's a lot of issues that are involved with it. But I would highly recommend that anyone can do this. And if you saw my last video, I taught my girlfriend how to play the oboe. And it's not that difficult, it just takes a lot of work. And if you're up for that challenge, I say go for it because it is so rewarding in the end. It has one of the best tones and it's a beautiful instrument that not many people can say they can do. Now, if you've been enjoying this video and you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe and follow for more. Thanks for watching Zeke Sobo. Take care, guys.